While Boeing was celebrating the 747's 50th anniversary, Airbus made a more somber announcement ending the production of the Airbus A380 Super Jumbo Jet. Following Emirates' new order for 70 jets, which includes 40 A330s and 30 A350s, Airbus is going to end the A380 production in 2021. Now, for a brief history of the A380, the first concept was in 19, the late 1980s when Boeing 747 was actually dominating the long-haul market. And prior to the Boeing 777, the first flight actually took place in 2005 with, and the first commercial flight with Singapore Airlines on a Singapore-Sydney flight in 2007. Since production of the A380 began, there's been over 200 A380s delivered to several airlines such as British Airways, Emirates, Singapore, and Lufthansa with Emirates being the largest carrier operating the A380 with over 100 in operation and the recent order had a deal with Airbus taking in 14 more A380s before the production ends. While the A380 is a technical marvel, it really did not prove well economically. Among the reasons cited for the demise of the A380 production has been airlines looking for more fuel-efficient aircraft and the reduced dependency on the hub-and-spoke model, which really would have benefited the A380 in that it would offer airlines higher capacity for connecting travelers to one hub to another hub. For example, from London to New York, you're connecting from, let's say, maybe Charlotte or Phoenix in the U.S. Nowadays, you can just get an a, a 787 or an A350, and if you need extra capacity, get a 777. You need even more capacity, you just add another flight. Now with all the headlines highlighting the end of production for the A380, I wanted to make this video about the legacy and the impact of the A380 in terms of the aviation industry as a whole. One of the first things that immediately comes to mind when you're thinking about the A380 is luxury. Um, the aircraft, besides being bigger, the amenities were actually spectacular to the point where there was there is competition and it led the way in terms of how airlines view luxury and incorporating into travel. Among these examples have been the showers on Emirates and the first class suites with beds basically. And I'm not just talking about first class uh, seats, I'm talking about hotel room-like beds on Singapore Airlines first-class cabins. And it's no surprise that these videos coming up from YouTubers have highlighted these uh, in-flight experiences. And unless you're really rich, then that's really a coveted seat. And with the A380 retiring, you'll still have a lot of opportunities. But in terms of spacing, I don't think any other aircraft could offer that amount of space and let airlines have that flexibility of offering much more. Now there's other discussions and with, I actually believe that going forward with more long haul flights and especially with long haul airline projects such as Qantas's uh, Project Sunrise, we'll see much more inspiration taken from the A380 into how are we going to make passenger comfort on these long, super long haul 20 hour flights from New York to Sydney better. So that's one of the first things that I think that the A380 will be remembered for. Now the A380 doesn't have that long of operating record, but in terms of um, safety record, we don't see any full loss of hull aircraft accidents such as the likes you see in the 747 or even the likes of the A330s, 20s. Airbus A380 has not had any major accidents resulting in the loss of life. However, there's been a few incidents such as Qantas's flight 32 from Singapore to Sydney had engine fire and an Air France flight that also had a similar incident. Now the counterpoint is that the A380 has never been fully tested in a situation where there could have been a result of fatalities. So it's kind of too hard to say or not definite to say that it's the safest aircraft in the world. But you know, so far, so good. Now, one of the other points about the A380 and its impact on aviation has been on airports where you see a lot of improvements on the runways and the gates and taxiways where air airports literally have, such as Frankfurt, Dubai, 
Los Angeles and New York's JFK and Heathrow and Singapore have dedicated gates to the A380. And while we see the A380 ending production, we might see the future where we have limited flight slots to on major routes where the aircraft may have to be as big as the A380. So we could see airports see the Super Jumbo as a template for how to deal with these kind of planes in the future. Now, another thing that I wanted to mention about additional to the airport adjustments has been the operational arrangements that have to be made for the A380, such as being a larger jet causes more wake turbulence and with more wake turbulence is a dangerous thing for much smaller aircraft. Now, while everybody likes to talk about the plane being in the air and air traffic being separation while in midair, the a less talked about discussion is ground control and probably the A380 is probably given a lot of air traffic controllers a lot of headaches given that you need to really give it a lot of room just to taxi and park. So this aircraft has probably given aircraft manufacturers notes such as Boeing with the 777X with the foldable wingtips and I think we're going to see much more. If we ever get to see larger aircraft, the I think the A380 has inspired the idea of design modifications in order for it to accommodate itself on the ground. While the Airbus A380 is an engineering marvel, again, this is another testament that innovation doesn't always mean a business success. And I think the A380 will go down as the second best Boeing 747. And I'm not even a Boeing fanboy. And I don't believe in that rule that if it ain't Boeing, I ain't going. Now, unlike the Boeing 747 amenities, I would have loved to take a shower and enjoy a first class suite bed. But again, the A380 succeeded more in having routes where it was long haul, high capacity, and a lot of first and business class passengers. Otherwise, the, the flights would not have made a profit. It would have been better off to just use a 787 or an A350 instead. For the A380, I think we have a lot of opportunities to take a flight with it. You have ANA launching their services, and you, also, you still have Emirates and Quant Qatar Airways, Qantas, all these uh, uh, several carriers that you're still going to be able to see the A380 and they're not going to go away anytime soon yet. I, I'd say maybe five to 10 years, the same timeline as the Boeing 747. And this is a much bigger thing where we see the decline of the jumbo jets, the four engine jumbo jets, I mean, 747, A380, which is not a great thing, but I think the aviation industry is a business and at the end of the day, it has to make money. And these aircraft are costing airlines money and Airlines need opportunities to create and grow their businesses. So I understand the business decision regarding the ending of the A380. It's very disappointing, but business is business and A380 is just another casualty of it. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I just want to ask, what is your thoughts on the end of the production of the A380s? And if you've ever flown on the A380, what's your favorite thing about it? Also, what do you think of the future of long haul travel and if is there a role for super jumbos in the future? If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a great day.